Hi, and welcome to the Apollo Hospitals Limited Q1 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone telephone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Devashi Singh from CDI India. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Lisa, uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this call to discuss the financial results of Apollo Hospital for the first quarter of the financial year 22-23, which were announced earlier today. We have with us on the call today the senior management team comprising Mrs. Sunita Reddy, managing director. Mr. A. Krishnan, Group CFO, Mr. Sri Ram Ayer, CEO of AHLL, Mr. Ashish Maheshwari, CFO of AHLL, Mr. Obul Reddy, CFO of the Pharmacy Division, and Mr. Sanjeev Gupta, CFO of Apollo 24 by 7. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. Please note the disclaimer mentioning these risk and uncertainties on slide number two of the investor presentation that was shared with all of you earlier. Documents relating to our financial performance have been circulated and these have also been uploaded on the corporate website and the websites of the respective stock exchanges. I would now like to turn the call over to Mrs. Sunita Reddy for her opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, sorry. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking time for this earnings call. Uh, I trust that all of you have received the earnings document. We are pleased to commence FY24 on a positive note with a strong first quarter, characterized by continued growth in top line, improved volumes, and payment meaningful network additions, and further growth in the user base for our digital offerings. Our healthcare services witnessed a robust 13% year-on-year growth in quarter one at FY24, even as IT volumes were 6% higher year-on-year. -year. Within this, the self-pay and insurance volumes grew by 10%, while revenues grew 21% year-on-year. Insurance revenues now contribute 44% of our total IT revenues. Overall occupancy across the group was at 62%, mature hospitals at 63%, and new hospitals at 60%. Our POV on an overall basis has increased by 11% year-on-year to 57,760. Against this backdrop, let me walk you through the consolidated financials. Consolidated revenue grew by 16% on a year-on-year basis to 4,418 crores. Healthcare services grew by 13% to 2,294 crores. Mature healthcare services grew by 10%, while new hospitals grew by 23%. Revenues from Apollo Health Coast stood at 1,805 crores in quarter one FY24, a growth of 22% year-on-year. Combined pharmacy grew by 24% on a year-on-year -year basis. Apollo Health and Lifestyle revenues registered 19% year-on-year growth at 319 crores in quarter one FY24, excluding the COVID impact. Consolidated EBITDA was at 509 crores, registering an increase of 4% year-on-year. Within this, the healthcare services EBITDA grew by 12% and healthcare margins were at 23.6%. Margins in mature hospitals were at 26.8 as against 26.4 in quarter one FY23. Margin at new hospitals was at 16.7 for the quarter as against 17.7 in quarter one FY23. The drop in margin was a count of a few factors, an increase in overall surgical discharges, resulting in higher material consumption, increase in marketing expenditure for the new hospitals, and focus investment in clinical talent in these hospitals for future growth. 
The pharmacy distribution business in Apollo Health Co. recorded an EBITDA of 125 crores, year-on-year growth of 13%. Operating costs and ease of charges were at 204 crores. There is a 13 crore lower than costs in sailing quarter of quarter 4 FY23. A bitter loss in the company was at 57 crores, down from 72 crores in the trailing quarter. This is in keeping in mind our commitment to reduce costs in this vertical. The business is on track to achieve operational break-even in quarter 4, 24. AHLL recorded an EBITDA of 23 crores as compared to an EBITDA of 29 crores in quarter 1, FI23. The drop in EBITDA is due to investments in network growth and specialized manpower. The margin profile is expected to improve with revenue ramp up from the network, as well as focused initiatives to drive process efficiencies. Consolidated fat was at 167 crores. Healthcare services fat was at 264 crores, a like-for-like -like growth of 19%. In substance, this was a strong quarter across several dimensions and metrics which we have identified in areas of focus. Within the healthcare services business, we have delivered an ROC of 25% with balanced ROC across all our geographies, the Metro, the Tire 1, and the Tire 2. We believe we have the most diversified footprint in the portfolio and significant headroom for growth. We have continued to improve our payer mix with visible results in our art form. The diagnostics vertical with AHLL recorded core revenue growth of 48% on a year-on-year -year basis and surpassed the revenue run rate of 100 crores for the quarter. Clinics core revenue grew by 23% year-on-year. Margins were impacted due to investments in network expansion as well as, well as specialized manpower. Several initiatives are underway to improve diagnostic margins, including platform changes and improved asset utilization. Private label and generics business contributed 16.02% of total pharmacy revenues. This was an improvement of 168 basis points over the same quarter last year. Our digital platform 24 by 7 added 2 million new users this quarter. The platform GFD was at 623 crores, growth of 189% on a year-on-year -year basis. We have achieved this GMD while reducing cash burn and are well on track to achieve operating break-even in this vertical in quarter 4, FY24. This quarter has signaled that the investment strategies adopted by us are gaining traction and are largely playing out to the plans that we had. We remain firmly committed to building the strongest integrated omnichannel healthcare network with the consumer at the center, ensuring access to high quality healthcare across the value chain. We will do this while achieving a healthy EBITDA margin and strong ROCEs. We believe we are building a sustainable and value enhancing platform guided by fiscal responsibility and new a unique consumer value proposition as our dual objective. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our new CEO of Apollo Health and Lifestyle, Sira Meyer. He was previously Chief Revenue Officer at Metropolis and brings 25 years of retail experience to that to the table. On this note, I would like to hand over to our moderator and open the line for questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touchstone telephone. If your questions have been answered and you wish to withdraw yourself from the queue, you may enter star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Harit Ahmed from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is on Apollo 24-7. I'm looking at the GMV uh, for the quarter. There's a 11% quarter-on-quarter growth. But when I look at the uh, revenue that you've disclosed for the online pharmacy distribution Apollo 24-7 segment, there's a almost a 20% quarter-on-quarter decline. 
So, uh, can you help us understand this disconnect? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for this question. Uh, my name is Sanjeev. I'll pick up this uh, question. I think there are two important, uh, you know, things that have happened in the uh, quarter, and uh, I would first refer. Uh, to the two post on his call, where you know we started, uh, uh, we discussed about that how in the platform we reduced our discounts to some 15 percent, and at that point of time, uh, January and February month was the time when the discounts to the pharmacy vertical was as high as about uh, 17 to 18 percent, and we dipped it down to some 15 percent. So one impact that has happened during the quarter uh, is, is that a lower discount of uh, roughly 13.7% that we are running in Q1 has impacted uh, certain top line. And I think it is a conscious decision by the management to let go, uh, you know, those value seekers onto the platform who were looking out for only the discount. In fact, uh, so as, as uh, you know, we have been continuously, uh, you know, working on the model. Uh, our discounts have always been lesser than the market, and uh, yeah, and and uh, so the first impact that has happened to the uh, quarter one, uh, uh, you know, impact on a lower five percent growth uh, future versus one on the GMV or a uh, lower revenue to GMV ratio is an account of uh, uh, discounts being lower that resulted into lower pharmacy sales. Second thing, what we did is that we also looked at those orders which are not profitable at all, and orders which were less than 200 rupees of uh, bill value are those orders which we have uh, let go from the system, and we are not fulfilling them. And uh, apart from the fact that there are certain pin codes, you know, where logistic cost or the fulfillment cost of the last mile is so very high that it does not make any sense to uh, take those orders. So I think what what we did is that uh, you know while we improved our unit economics and the cost lines and majority of that benefit will also improve in Q2 and some benefit has approved in Q1. This has resulted into about seven to ten percent dip in our uh, pharmacy revenue. So that is the reason you would see that revenue to GMV ratio, which was uh, about. Uh, about 43 percent, 40 to 43 percent in Q4 has come down to about 33 to 34 percent. So, slowly and steadily, as we see July month and as we see, uh, you know, this quarter, I think we'll, uh, this will further improve. But, but the essential reason behind a lower revenue to GMV ratio or uh, uh, 5 percent growth in GMV in Q1 versus Q4 uh, is only uh, to, to make sure that the business is more viable, more profitable. So is this the revenue to GMV ratio that we should be factoring going forward? Uh, this around 20, 30 percent. I think it, it should be better. Uh, you know what happens is you know whenever you do a structural change to the uh, business, you know there is a uh, there is a fall that we see uh, you know on an immediate basis. Uh, July we decreased a little bit, uh, but but I think August is uh, tracking very well, and I think we should be moving up from this 33 percent to. Uh, 35 to 40 percent in this quarter, at least. Yeah, uh, okay, got it. Uh, the, the second question uh, is on your guidance of uh, 10,000 crores of revenue and, and uh, 6 percent of the margins for the combined pharmacy business. So, uh, firstly, I wanted to uh, clarify if the 6 percent is a, a post in days margin uh, guidance uh, that you have given. Uh, Sanjeev, you want, will you take this for Robles also here? Robles? Hi, this is uh, in line with our, you know, uh, combined business which we have seen and, uh, you know, this can be sustained. Yeah, so, you know, so there is, there is obviously, a, when you're thinking of the post in days margins, uh, there is a in days benefit as well. And then that's in the past been around 300 to 350 basis points. So, business level. This is at the business yeah. level. Yeah, yeah, understood, understood. So when I when I uh, deduct the indirect benefit here, the combined pharmacy EBITDA margins are maybe in the 2.5 to 3% range, uh, and and this is lower than what we used to have in the past. So I understand there's a higher level of discounting, but uh, you know you talked about some additional costs and the front end pharmacy level. In the past, in the last few quarters, uh, how are we tracking on those, and and how should we think of uh, margins uh, in the in the 
from the pharmacy level so we have the same cost continuing in fact if you look at it uh, the discounts have slightly moderated versus last year and q4 however you know the network cost in terms of the store addition and uh, almost about 20% of our stores are yet to reach break even it may take a quarter or two more so the q1 we have that cost coming in and impacting the profits otherwise we will be back to normal level and you have to remember this is a this is the combined business which includes the online yeah. as well so you know online is where there is higher discount so if you look at offline versus online offline would be higher in this uh, in this mix all right thank you sir uh, i'll get back to the case thank you before we move to the next question we would like to request participants to restrict their questions to two during the initial round we have the next question from the line of saurabh kapalia from sundaram mutual fund please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, in your region wise operation parameters uh, i think uh, tamil nadu and the other region the inpatient volume as well as outpatient volume has been muted so any specific uh, reason for this So there was a six percent growth in uh, in inflation, outflation as well. For the Tamil Nadu region, uh, the reason for that is clearly, you know, one it was holiday season. The second is that, uh, uh, let me say, travel to Tamil Nadu was restricted because of train logistics as well as air, air, some of the airlines cancelling um, that route. But now it's reinstated. and july is looking very good okay and uh, can you remember the case for the the other uh, market where we saw the outpatient volume down by 15% the last uh, year was uh, the previous year had rtp rtp cr test which was covid test and therefore the op looked high but now without covid it has grown On a like-to-like basis, that is good. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Sham Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, and thank you for taking my question. Uh, just one on overall occupancy, so 62 percent. I know you are comparing with 60 percent year ago. Uh, but that may have been impacted because of covid and other stuff so just want to understand uh, the level of occupancy is this not only you right even other companies i know there's a seasonal issue here in q1 but has been below expectations right so is there uh, an element of either pent up that's not coming back or you know you generally think this is just a seasonally the slowest quarter in the year and things will pick up uh, so just your color on yourself as well here yeah. so it's definitely picking up uh this has happened uh, you know more in the south i think you know we were impacted it was a very hot summer it was vacation season and like i said uh, travel was restricted to one of our uh, networks which is chennai but i think it is seasonal and july is looking extremely good so it's uh, you know clearly because of some of the things that happened in the first three months So it's so it's when we had our aspiration to reach 70% and over time 75% is there any impediments to reaching that numbers or you think you know over time our network uh, will be able to get there is there an issue of say cannibalization in the sense that people from uh, who are earlier traveling to chennai are no longer able to travel or they're going to another network hospital of yours are you seeing those dynamics which will prevent us from reaching historical high occupancies you think So Chennai is clearly get, is there now uh, in terms of so people are still traveling to Chennai for quaternary care. Uh, what is good is that you know as uh, our tier two hospitals also are doing much better, and uh, there was a you know there is a 17% growth in tier two, which which I think is a very good signal for and uh, it's rewarding to see that our geographic footprint. and the impact on roc has validated the strategy okay this is my last question i'll keep it brief uh, you know we had it i think 900 stores last year we have added 30 stores in the first quarter so 
just want to understand what's our target for this 10,000 crores. Don't we need um, additional stores or we think we are we are going to have a much lower run rate this year? Uh, we have factored about 500 to 600 stores to be added during the year. Q1 consciously we slowed down because in the uh, you know Q4 last year we added about 370, 380 stores. And in the last month of March, about 150 stores. We want to give that space to stabilize those stores. And Q1, we are back to our normal store opening. And uh, we expect to be there between 500 and 600 for the year. Got it, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Damianti Karai from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. My question is again on Apollo uh, 24-7. So Sanjeev, you mentioned uh, you, unit economics are improving, you're reducing losses, etc. But uh, uh, GMB growth has been, I'll say, uh, slow uh, compared to what we are expecting in last two quarters. And then earlier you have set uh, a target to double up GMB in 24 compared to 23 level. So do you think you can still achieve that or you're focusing more on uh, reducing losses? Uh, so I think it is both the things. You know, first important thing is to ensure that uh, you know the uh, you know the business is uh, only only those transactions on to the platform are done. You know, which are uh, you know making some uh, economic sense to the business. Uh, while also looking into the fact that you know we have a target in our mind, we did about sixteen hundred and fifty crore in the previous year, and then uh, you know obviously we added for three thousand crore. Uh, we made 622 crore in Q1, and uh, I think the runway itself is 2500 crore. And while uh, while we tapered down certain uh, uh, volumes, uh, you know, in Q1, uh, started March uh, to till uh, end of June. Uh, but I think we've got various other initiatives to ensure that uh, uh, you know uh, we fill the fill the gaps quickly with uh, new set of customers, uh, new offerings, and you know, we increase the average order value. In fact, our average order value has also gone up. In spite, uh, uh, you know, if you look at it, you know, 845 rupees of PGC versus 935 rupees. So uh, I think we should be able to hit the target of 3,000 very early in the stage to kind of uh, say that, you know, we'll not be able to hit. Uh, I think 622 through is, is a decent number for Q1, and we should be meeting our target. Uh, you know, this is what I would say at this point of time. Okay, uh, want to understand the discount part better. So, uh, do you suggest like there, there has been some like uh, seasonality here also? You mentioned there were higher discount in Feb uh, and March. Uh, that's why a bit of more volume, but now it has reduced. So, can you talk a bit like how your uh, discount work for say offline orders and online orders uh, across the year? Like, uh, what are the patterns or how do we see things moving there? So uh, I think as far as the uh, discount strategy, if I just talk about, uh, discount strategy has always been, uh, you know, a delta between offline and online to the extent of about 160 bits to 200 bits. At no point of time, uh, this gap was uh, you know, higher, uh, you know, if I uh, look back in last uh, six months. You know, prior to that, obviously, it was a very different uh, ball game where, uh, you know, we were also giving a discount of about 18 to 20 percent, and uh, offline was uh, steady at about 10 to 11 percent. As we move more into only play, as uh, as more and more customers have started transacting on both, both the platforms, so obviously we have to, at some point of time, rationalize the entire thing, uh, looking uh, into the scale, looking into the right time, and this is what we did. Uh, somewhere in March month, uh, that uh, more and more only players started happening across the uh, channels, and it is it is to the interest of the customer that you should not confuse him or her, uh, you know, with uh, differential pricing, and and that is where we curtail down our discount. So, uh, so this is a good move as far as the customer side is concerned. Obviously, it uh, does give uh, benefit to the uh, company. As far as the current year is concerned, uh, uh, we are running, running at about 13.7% for Q1. Uh, I think this will continue to be in this range for Q2. And uh, I don't see any reason that we should be inching up in Q3 or Q4. Maybe uh, 10, 20 basis point seven there. Uh, it could be max, uh, max 14%, it's not 13.25 to 13.5, so something in between. And I guess. As far as the offline business is concerned, they will continue to be around 12 to 12.5%. 12 
uh, only only a gap of 100 to 150 basis points. So I think directionally, all of us should look into uh, these discounts uh, for the rest of the year. So somewhere say 12 to 14 uh, percent will be the broader range for discount. Uh, uh, yes, yes Okay. Yes. Thanks. And my last question is, uh, if you can uh, provide uh, this, this question is for Sunita, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, volumes are a bit muted, but you have uh, continued to perform well on ARPO growth, etc. So, how should we look at uh, uh, ARPO growth outlook for say next uh, one to two years? So just one thing on the RFOB growth has been over 10% improvement in RFOB, 11%. Um, and this is a function of both case mix and tariff increase. So I think, you know, this year, this 11% is some, this 57,000 moving to maybe up to 60,000 is something that we can sustain. Uh, in terms of uh, how do we look at occupancy, I think that is the important question that we have the room for growth. And that in places like Chennai, we're already, you know, 41% of total market share. And we see we are growing this. So with this, you know, I think it's going to be, um, you know, as we go forward, this was asked earlier, it is going to be higher occupancy, resulting in, in higher EBITDA and also higher EBITDA margins coming from the cost, you know, fixed cost being met. And, and therefore, we're quite, quite confident that, that this is the way forward. Okay. The other thing that has also happened is that you know if you look at the case mix, the case mix is also improved for the better. We have seen that the Congo case mixes are going up, which is all the high-end cases that we are doing, which is the other reason that our pop is high. You know, secondary care cases have also gone up because you know clearly with the insurance and the payer mix helping us, uh, you know there is a tailwind in insurance which we believe is here to stay for the next several years. Uh, we, have, we have just started seeing the traction in insurance, which is good. So clearly, you know, now uh, we are seeing that a lot of people also are coming for secondary care into the hospital, which is why ALOS is down. So ALOS being down is also a matter of, you know, if you look at the overall volume, volume growth is 6. Uh, but if you look at insurance and self-pay, the volume growth is actually 11. So we had let go, as you know, last year, you know, by Q4, we had let go of a uh, lot of CGHS patients in the, uh, across the system, which is why when you compare Q1 to Q1, you look at, uh, look at uh, you know, a Q1, which has, a, uh, which, which has a CGHS and institutional volumes, but now the volume doesn't have that, but still we have grown 6%. So with that, because of the end, which is by insurance and self-pay, when you look at the 11% is the volume growth. And that on revenue growth is actually 20% on the IP side. You know, we are showing a 13% overall revenue growth for the quarter. But we know that, you know, the, the overall mix of the cases that we have are very good. Yes, occupancy is something that we are working on. And we will see that also go up because it is, as Sunita said, you know, Chennai is higher. It is some of the, you know, some of the business, some of the, uh, uh, some of the units outside of uh, Chennai, like uh, Madurai, Trichy, where we have some uh, lower occupancies, but but ROIs are all go good, you know. So it's headroom for growth exists. We have to figure out how to fill it up now. So we are working on that plan as well. So broadly, I think, you know, structurally, if you look at the PNL, the structurally the PNL is quite uh, strong, and it results in higher ROIC also because of that. Uh, occupancy is something I guess over the next two years it's you know it's 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 like a, we look at it in the, from opportunity perspective. Okay, uh, so also we should be sustaining at healthy level. Yeah, I'm just uh, clarifying. Yeah, okay, thanks. Thank you. A reminder to participants: uh, please restrict your questions to two during the initial round. We have the next question from the line of Kunal Namesha from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So the first one on the uh, 24 by 7, it seems that, uh, um, you know, in order to kind of uh, improve the profitability, we have put some filters, uh, and, you know, in terms of our strategy uh, to refine our user base. But how uh, would that have impacted uh, our uh, PAM, you know, when we look at uh, what our strategy a year back versus now, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, so, 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 like, I don't know how much reduction we would have uh, seen in TAM because of this. Um, you're, you're listening to Greg, right? Cost of acquisition? 
not cost of acquisition just just because let's say we are putting a filter that you know uh, below 2000 bucks uh, you know order you would generally not take in that case that would also reduce our total addressable market based on the affordability etc right so how would uh, you know and calculation would have changed for you so 200 rupees 200 okay. okay i i i may start then okay Yeah, that's that's a two hundred rupees, and I think uh, uh, see, uh, we also need to understand, you know, at times what happens is that uh, customers have a habit of, you know, breaking their entire, uh, you know, uh, normally, uh, you know, any any e-commerce player would like to, uh, you know, have a basket shoppers into the platform where you see, uh, you know, pop-up shoppers. Now, uh, chronic customers are supposed to be, you know, taking medicine at least for uh, the whole of the month. And uh, if not, uh, at least uh, you know to be for two weeks or three weeks. Uh, over a period of time, uh, we also saw certain pinfalls and certain customers behavior due to the fact that we got the analytics behind. Uh, you know, now we are uh, in the fourth year. We got three years of uh, experience here. We we found out that there are certain geographies, there are certain set of customers who who are good shoppers, but they have a tendency to reduce. Uh, you know, their their shopping cart by uh you know uh, as you as you know 200 bucks 100 securities and they continuously uh, uh, you know order so uh, what we have actually done is that uh, you know certain customers who were actually only giving us the total value of about 600 to 700 rupees in the entire month those are the ones uh, uh, you know which which we believe uh, that and and if they are not chronic other are those set of customers to whom we let go And uh, major impact has started coming in from the value seekers, the uh, the people who had a tendency to take the orders, you know, where the discounts were very high. And uh, I think that is the time that we are now no more in that particular uh, stage, uh, or rather, phase two of the company is in a very different where you know we would like to have uh, you know those set of customers which are chronic and uh, are associated with the company. uh you know for a little longish and also cross pollinating between uh, the other verticals be the consultation or the diagnostic i think as far as the overall uh, canvas is concerned or a future potential is concerned i think uh, you know online uh, business is got a vast uh, uh, thing and uh, uh, you know you know market and uh, in a true uh, spirit only a uh, only is actually giving us a larger volume share of every customer the uh, uh, the analysis uh, suggests that you know people who are the customers are becoming only giving us 30% more volume share versus uh, when they were not only so i think from the strategy point of view also it's good to have those set of customers which are chronic which you know give us a high repeat our repeat for q1 has been about 27% versus 21% in the previous Year ten quarter, so that is also a very good metric. So I think we are running into a right direction from the strategy and the execution point of view. Sure, and and uh, the contracting user number that you have given, uh, you know, for this quarter and the uh, comparable quarter, would you be able to share the number for quarter four? Uh, uh, which which number are you looking at? It? Transactor, uh, transacting user, right? Which is 11.4 lakh, which is what is written in a transacting user base. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, in the previous quarter, the uh, Q4 is what I think to. It was about uh, 9.9 uh, lakh. 9.9. Okay, perfect. And uh, the second question uh, is is uh, on the payer mix. Uh, I think we have shared that insurance is around 44 percent. uh but would we be able to share the other channels as well uh, and uh, let's say we have been doing this peer mix refinement uh you know for last one year but let's say when i look at from a 2 to 3 year perspective uh, you know pre covid let's say you know if i 19 or uh, or if i 20 uh, how would have our peer mix looked and from there uh, you know how much we would have uh, done in terms of refinement I think self pay pre COVID pre pre COVID self pay was almost around forty five percent. Now, if you look at uh, self pay as a percentage of revenue, it is forty percent. Insurance is the is is where we have had significant in, increase, where it was close to twenty five to twenty eight percent pre COVID. That has come to forty four percent of our revenues now. So clearly, between uh, insurance. Uh, 
private pay and uh, um, uh, and insurance uh, self pay and uh, private sector we have almost around 80% of our of our revenues coming from that 80 80 82 so you know so this is what what has happened is from we have definitely been able to focus on bringing down some of the uh, government and some of the low paying cases across and this is the new normal that we would like to believe we will continue to go into as we uh, proceed as well. IPS is an area that will, will will further grow because IPS growth for the quarter has been good. You know, our uh, you know hope, uh, hopefully once we get our presence in Delhi also in the in the next 18 months, we should be able to get higher uh, IPS growth because Delhi is one of the places where IPS is high. So in in, in our consolidated results, we don't provide IPS because otherwise IPS is today 7% of our revenue here, whereas in Delhi it is 15%. So that is the other area that we would hope that we should be able to uh, tap into as we move forward, which should change a bit uh, as uh, um, uh, later. But otherwise, you know, this is the new normal. Sure. Um, uh, so Ramesha, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. but you'll have to come back in the queue. There are participants waiting. Sure. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Lavanya from UBS. Please go ahead. Oh, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I just wanted to check uh, that uh, healthcare revenue growth is driven by ARPOG largely, but uh, sequentially our margins are broadly uh, similar uh, for both uh, mature and uh, uh, new hospitals. So, so why is the ARPOG is not translating to higher margins? So in, 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 in both, uh, you know, there are different answers for both uh, mature and for new. In uh, mature, one of the things that we have seen is, you know, there has been a lot of increase in some of the, we have seen good increase in the surgical mix, which actually occurs well from the from a longer perspective. Uh, so the surgical mix increase has resulted in a higher cost of materials in the mature hospitals. This uh, this is obviously aided by higher insurance, as I said. The, you know, someone who's covered more by insurance has the propensity to come to a, a better quality hospital or is definitely choosing us over some of the others. And this is one of the reasons that we are seeing a high-end cases as well as secondary care cases go up. So cost of surgical uh, material costs have gone up. But what we have also seen is that, you know, the, the, the doctor's fees related to that went up a bit in this quarter. But as we move forward, we, uh, you know, there is a, you know, we had taken some tariff correction in the middle of the quarter. We think that will start play, paying off. And into the next quarter, etc., we will see the margin go up on mature. In the new, we have added doctors because, you know, one of the things to uh, which we have also done is as uh, to focus on the uh, utilization occupancy. We had seen doctor gaps in places like Navi Mumbai and uh, uh, some of the others like Vizac, uh, where we have added doctors on guarantee money fees. This we will be, we believe, will start to start paying off over the next uh, two quarters, and then that margin should also come back. So we are quite. Uh, so these are the reasons for uh, both these uh, segments. Got it. Uh, so some bit of marketing cost has also gone up. In uh, you know, we did spend a, a bit of marketing in the new hospitals as well. Okay, got it. So this should sequentially also we should see improvement in margins of both uh, mature and new hospitals. Yes. That's correct. That's okay. that's our uh, on. Uh, 24 7 uh can you get the split of gmv for this quarter like in terms of pharma and uh diagnostics yeah so pharma we did uh roughly uh you know 350 cr for uh, uh 350 cr for the uh quarter and uh diagnostic was roughly 30 cr and the remaining was coming in from consultations and uh, uh, the entire IPUC business Okay, what would be the, for the split for a previous quarter, like uh, Q4? Q4 was, uh, uh, for pharmacy, was uh, 375 CR, and uh, diagnostic was 22. Diagnostic went up by about uh, 16 uh, to 18% for the quarter, and uh, uh, pharmacy, as I said in, in the previous uh, uh, question, that mm -hmm. uh, you know, we took certain decisions to uh, you know let go those uh, volumes which are not profitable to the organization, and that is the reason we see that this happening in Sri Lanka. So, if I may ask last Lamania, question, what is the tax rate? Um, uh, Lamania, okay. I'm sorry, you'll have to come back. Uh, we have participants okay, waiting. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'll just answer that question that she actually was raising. The tax rate is 25% overall for the company. And uh, in the standalone, it is 25%. What happens in console, you see it at a higher number. That's because there are losses which comes from uh, Apollo Health Co. and Apollo H AHLL, where there is no tax, which actually uh, skews, skew, sorry, skews the tax rate to close to 32%. But the tax rate that the company is today operating in at the standalone is 25 some one or two of our subsidies is that still at that older uh, tax regime, like Bangalore will Bangalore will move into the new tax regime next year. Uh, so and I think the same is the case with uh, Lucknow. So these are the two which are in that older uh, tax regime. They will also move to the newer tax regimes in the coming fiscal. Next question. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Rishabh Tavari from Allegro Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, in the previous quarter, you issued both the combined pharmacy agenda, and someone previously asked that uh, it was not reported as well as uh, the, we are expecting some ramp up from the recently added stores. So, if you could please uh, tell the combined pharmacy agenda. And uh, second question is regarding the India's uh, impact on the agenda, uh, there used to be a slide on this. Uh, if you could give a ballpark guidance on that. Uh, on the combined pharmacy update, as I explained to you, that last year we added uh, about 1,000 stores, and it will take about one year, uh, you know, 12 to 15 months for the break even. So those uh, uh, higher number of stores contributing to the losses has impacted, and we will be back in the next two, three quarters. Mm -hmm. And but on the on the uh, in days to post in days, I'm sorry, that was a miss in this slide. I think we have not sent that. We will add that and put it back there. Uh, you know, I think uh, that's the same number as what was there last quarter. Pre in days to post in days, um, I think 30 crores at the healthcare services level and 20 at the AHL level. We'll put it back out there and that slide we will add and send it back. We will upload it on the website. Sorry about that. Okay. Just a clarification, so, so there is no added improvement on the combined pharmacy? Combined pharmacy, uh, no, any specific improvement? No, it will be through the volume and, you know, cost cutting next to two quarters. And on an improved profitability on the new store. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Noshad Chaudhary from Aditya Bidra Sun Life Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks. Uh, firstly, on the occupancy side, uh, the target which we have, 70%, uh, uh, can we uh, reach and uh, sustain that 70% for the long period of time, or do you think uh, it will be like touch and then plan for a sizable capex? No, no, that 70% will not require any capex, but it will take us a little time to get to say, uh, to 70%. We're already trending, you know, it's probably, you know, we've reached uh, close to 70%, but uh, while we do have a target of 70%, we will not be able to deliver it, and it will require no capex. No, no, uh, I'm asking, um, can we sustain... Once we reach there, can we sustain 70% for a long period of time? Yes, yes, we can in those regions. So overall, as a company, maybe not. But I think in each of the regions where we start 70, we should be able to sustain. Yeah, and to also add on to your point, you know, as we said about the new hospital grants, which we are doing 200, uh, you know, the 2,000 2, beds and 3,000 crores over the next three years. The first stock of beds are coming into two regions where we are more than 75% occupied. One is Bang one is uh, uh, one is Calcutta, and the other is uh, uh, Bangalore, which we are looking at, looking at. So you know where. So these are the two that will start off, and we also are looking at. Then we are looking at uh, Gurgaon, uh, which will follow in the year after that, where again our occupancy is over 75%. So we we are quite clear about how we are looking at the strategy of expansion. Those are new markets. These will not impact our existing uh, uh, occupancies at all. I understand. I'm just trying to understand on the blended level, 70% is uh, doable on a sustainable basis or not, on a blended level? Yes, at this level, but the new hospitals will take time, right, to get to 70%, any oh, new hospital yes. that would come? Up to 2026, yes. Yeah. Without compromising on the future growth. Yes. Yes. 
and uh, lastly in terms of uh, you know, scalability of your healthcare business if you uh, hypothetically if you think of doubling your uh, healthcare revenue uh, from uh, to the current base what are the uh, challenges comes to your mind oh i think uh, you know when we are looking at doubling just for adding beds to ensure that uh, we have beds to fill but more importantly again you know it's the fact that we still have, have by increasing 20% occupancy we're actually taking up our, our revenue by another 40% so clearly there is uh, there is headroom to grow uh, you have plans and uh, and i think that there is strong traction in the hospitals division this this quarter should be a very good quarter and um, i think you could look at it next quarter i'll come back in queue thank you so much thank you we have the next question from the line of nitin agarwal from dam capital please go ahead Thanks. I have a couple of questions on 24 by 7. Only on the. Uh, uh, we cannot hear you clearly, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. So on the 24 by 7, in terms of uh, the operating losses, uh, which the expenses which are there at 175 crores for this quarter. I mean, do, so what is the relation that we should keep in mind the GMV for these expenses? Uh, Yeah, so uh, I, I think this is how we also internally look into. And uh, if I look at Q1, uh, if I can report the expenses, we reported about uh, 28 percent, which was roughly 66 percent in the same quarter uh, previous year. And Q4 was about 32 percent. And the target for the current year, which which I talked about in the previous and before, was also uh, to have between 20 to 22 percent. Uh, this is one thing, and secondly, uh, I think many of the initiatives that started working in the uh, organization, which we had thought through, debated, and started executing, we had 189 crore of expenses in Q4, and uh, the Q4 already been reduced in Q1, which was down to 175. So, and then, and this is a structural change. So, obviously, 60 crore worth of uh, cost reduction has already happened, and as I see July month numbers. I'm sure that you know QB numbers are also going to be uh, lesser than 100 and 75 as we see uh, next next uh, in you know during the term. So I guess maybe the way to look at this thing is this uh, 175 crore number is a is a topish number. It keeps probably coming down with the cost uh, reduction as we go forward, and the EBITDA to GMV conversion, the EBITDA especially with the GMV growth keeps going up, which uh, which starts to uh, uh, I mean so that's how the losses begin to narrow in this business. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely, but that that the direction that we have started working on too. And you know, in the next couple of years, when the say, GMV goes to close to a billion dollars and all that we talk about, uh, I mean, at what level do the operating expenses begin to peak out uh, or should sustain at around these? Uh, you know, at when we start get to a billion dollars in GMV? I guess a little tricky to find. But I think uh, you know the way we look at it is that uh, you know whatever level of expenses we have it in the digital segment itself, you know those expenses which we need to uh, you know easily uh, get out of the commission or the pay slips that we have it in the uh, you know uh, on, on the GMV. So uh, uh, yes, uh, the expenses are starting going down. Uh, in, the, in the future, uh, depending you know uh, which uh, you know which which of the verticals we intend to invest. uh you know uh, this is a little bit of data over there but uh, otherwise it's not possible you know, the digital uh, alone it will take 1 billion dollars to be able to take care of the expenses and the activity but as far as the current quarter is concerned i think uh, uh, we did the this one it can be down to 1 kind of in this quarter and uh, current quarter which is q2 uh, i think will also be uh, less than one kind of question of And we're getting the last one on that. And where would, how should you see the EBITDA percentage improving uh, with relation to GMV over the next uh, couple of years? I think uh, uh, today, if I look at uh, you know the margin net, you know my margin net is also steadily going up. Uh, it used to be uh, about six to seven percent. Six point six percent was the uh, you know the margin to the revenue in Q1 uh, FY23. It went up to seven nine and nine point seven over the previous quarter. Uh, this quarter it is 10.89 percent. 
I think uh, the next two, three years, for sure, it is going to be more than 20%. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Sathars and Investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, I'm an audible. Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, so my question was uh, regarding our associate company, Indra Prasta Medical. So last couple of quarters, we've been seeing uh, improved uh, business performance. So what has led to this turnaround? Is there any operational changes that we have taken? Yes, uh, clearly, you know, we have got very good doctors on board it. And, and this has resulted in, in better performance and high occupancy. Okay. Uh, can you highlight what is the current occupancy right now? 22%. Sorry. Okay. And uh, regarding the lease, which is due this year, uh, so what is the progress on that front? Uh, we'll inform you at the next uh, at the next quarter. Okay. And uh, since our occupancy is around 70, 72%, so are we looking to do further capex uh, on that land? There will be some capex on the land, but Apollo Hospitals is also looking at expansion in the region, leveraging the the networks that we built. On the same land on uh, which uh, Indra Prastha is there? There is some expansion on Indra Prastha itself, but beyond Indra Prastha, we are looking at expansion in the region. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference back to the management for closing comments. Please go ahead. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining this call. As I conclude, I would like to emphasize that everything that we do in a public hospital centered around the consumer and the patient. Our deep focus on clinical care, as shown in our Congo case mix, our technology absorption, the fact that we have now 25 robots that are being used, demonstrates that we are building out an all India network. And it also demonstrates that we have the ability to meet all challenges that may come in our way of future growth. So we are quite confident that this will be a very good year for us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Apollo Hospitals Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lights. Thank you.